So now I'm going to do two things. I'm going to talk about tariffs and quotas in large countries. I've already done the small country case. And then I'm also going to talk about trade subsidies briefly. And I'm just going to stick to the small country in that case. Okay. So the thing that makes a large country large is that it has the ability to affect world price. Okay. So by if you buy less, that means that it is going to push the world price down because you're, you're basically dropping your demand for the product. So you're going to lower the price for it. That's why it's interesting to look at the supply and demand for trade. It can, you can think about it as a simple supply and demand curve. Um, here I'm just going to talk about gaps between the curves, but I've, now I've got the importer on the left and then an exporter on the right. And I'm assuming that there's really only two countries, right? So this is the importing country, this is the exporting country. So here's the gap between demand and supply, which is imports. Now the only place to get that product is from the other country, and so this exact same distance has to be exporters. Now you could draw this, and a lot of times I don't in class, but you could actually make a third graph that has supply and demand, right? With this, this supplier would actually start at zero and grow. And then we've already done demand, but this would start at zero up high, and then it would grow downward. This would start lower. So in between, you could actually have exports and imports as a supply and demand graph. But I'm, I'm just going to focus on this here to get the point across, okay? So this is the imports of this country, the importer, and it has to be the exact same amount as the only other country, which is the exporter, okay? Now, that's um, under free trade, but let's suppose that this large importer institutes a tariff, and it, you could have a quota as well, and without any shifts, they're going to be equivalent, but right now, let's just say that there's a tariff. What this is going to do is it's going to push the world price up to here. Now, for a large country, right, this is going to have an effect on the rest of the world. So this is a lar large country tariff reduces the imports. That's going to have an effect over here because they use, they're going to sell less. They're going to export less. They used to export this much, but now they can only export as much as this same distance here. Okay, so that's going to actually find this here. This is going to lower the price until the only um, amount that can match that is the gap here. So the only quantity gap that is equal to the new imports is this exports here, and that occurs at a lower price. So what that means is that this country cannot um, sell what it used to, and it can only do so at a lower price. So the importing country ben could benefit from this tariff because they're going to push the world price down, and they're going to actually have an effect on the world price that can benefit them because they're going to they're going to import less but they're going to get those products at a cheaper price. So you can actually push some of those losses off onto their trade partner. So large countries can have something called an optimal tariff where the deadweight losses are offset by what's called the terms of trade gain. They benefit from lower import prices and only large countries can do that. So that's, that's the one point I try to get across is that large countries such as the United States can actually benefit. Um, if the United States, like in the past, has put up agricultural tariffs, um, you know, on China or something, or, or they could put uh, manufacturing tariffs uh, on China, it's actually going to benefit because it's going to force China to have to lower their prices, okay? Now, real briefly, I'm going to talk about the export subsidy. I don't do too much of this in class, but basically this is um, a, not a tax on, on imports. It's actually a subsidy, which is the opposite of a tax, to exports. All right, so here's import demand and upward sloping export supply. This is from the exporter's point of view. They're going to do something that boosts export supply, makes exports more profitable uh, for their sellers so that they can increase those sales abroad. And that, that can work into GDP from a macro perspective. And so that's where this uh, supply and demand really can come in handy, something to boost export supply. Okay, and so for inside the country, you can draw it like this, but I'm going to go over here quick. This is that increase in export supply. A lot of times a government could give money, um, give manufacturers money to maybe to, to cut losses, you know, to cover any kind of a, a profit issues. Uh, but uh, that could be a direct payment maybe to U.S. farmers or, or in East Asia, they're uh, big export subsidizers. And so giving money is going to increase export supply so that this is the new equilibrium point. But anytime you counteract what the market wishes, you're going to have some sort of a deadweight loss. So quantity is greater than it used to be, right? You're increasing the quantity. You could be subsidizing unprofitable firms, right? So which is a deadweight loss. So this could be drawn as a deadweight loss. Now you could draw it over here. This is the same increase in exports from the old quantity to the new quantity. There's more exports than before. Here's the same deadweight loss triangles. And this could be a payment to 
Um, this whole rectangle is actually a payment to uh, those, those exports. So if you gave cash to farmers to sell abroad, you'd be giving every farmer a check. All that production would be paid for by the government at this price. You get a very large rectangle. But right here, this, this uh, I'm going to focus right here on the, the deadweight loss triangles. All right, so just like tariffs are inefficient, all right, anytime the, the, you're going against this market outcome, you're going to have a, uh, a loss. And here's that deadweight loss.